everyone, it's me, John Lorden. Welcome to another edition of Brain Scratch Case Cracked. I know that logo behind me says Brain Scratch Searchlight, but that's because we are picking up on a case that was originally featured on Searchlight. That is the case of Erica Lynn Parsons. And if you don't recall, this is a young girl that was adopted by um, some relatives of hers, and uh, she had disappeared for a, a good amount of time when her brother, who was a biological child of her adopted parents, uh, was eventually kicked out of the house. He went and claimed that uh, something was wrong, that she had been missing for years. The parents appeared on Dr. Phil. They told this story about a woman named Nan, who was supposedly Erica's biological grandmother on her father's side, and that Erica went to live with Nan. Of course, the information they had for Nan was no longer valid. Her Facebook had been deleted. Her cell phone number had, had been since uh, not working and eventually given to someone else completely unrelated to the case. And uh, if you do watch the original searchlight, searchlight that I did on this case, um, I was pretty, pretty critical of the parents for the manner in which they just kind of dismissed that uh, Erica's fine, she's just with this Nan woman, despite the fact that they had no information about where this woman lived or how to contact this woman. Um, now, if you do watch that episode, I was also um, hopeful, extremely hopeful, that Erica might still be alive, that maybe there was some potential that she had been sold in some type of black market deal to another family of some kind or something along those lines. And unfortunately, just as of the day I'm recording this, uh, September 30th, um, that is obviously not the case. Now, her two adoptive parents are serving time uh, essentially for stealing money from the government. They were receiving assistance because Erica is a special needs child. And despite the fact that she wasn't living with them for many years, they kept receiving checks for her. So um, they have since been serving two separate sentences. I believe the mother is serving 10 years and the father is serving eight, if I recall correctly. And um, the mystery about where Erica is, and I think we could also infer what happened to her, seems like it has been solved. So let's jump to some current news. This is from WCNC.com. Sandy Parsons led investigators to Erica's remains is the title. In August, Rowan County Sheriff's investigators obtained new leads that confirmed Erica was more than likely deceased. On Tuesday, FBI special agents and Rowan County detectives located the skeletal remains of a young girl. The remains were taken to the state medical examiner's office where they were identified to be that of Erica Lynn Parsons. Sheriff Brooks confirmed Friday that Sandy Parsons, Erica's adoptive father, was brought from prison to point out exactly where Erica Parsons was buried. The medical examiner is now working to determine Erica's cause of death, and Erica's adoptive parents said the girl went to stay with relatives in the Asheville, North Carolina area and had not seen her since. Sheriff's investigators determined that information was not true. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children also assisted in the campaign to publicize Erica's disappearance with updated missing posters. As a matter of fact, that image of her that we were just looking at from Searchlight uh, here, that is an image that they did of age progressing her to, I believe, 15 years old, if I recall correctly. And just to get some more detail, jumping over to WSOCTV.com, on Friday morning, that is today, September 30th, 2016, Family members visited the site where her remains were found. They broke down and held each other. Erica's aunt, Teresa Goodman, said officials struck a deal with Erica's adopted father, Sandy Parsons, from prison, where he and his wife are both serving sentences for accepting federal benefits for Erica after she disappeared. Goodman said she and a private investigator searched the same area near Pageland in July, where Erica's remains were ultimately found, but came up empty. Now, even when they were facing the judge for just accounts of fraud, apparently there was information that was leading that judge to already believe something was seriously wrong with Erica here. Um, the judge at the sentencing said that the evidence that suggested Erica was dead was overwhelming. Quote, you embraced a plan to get rid of her, the judge told Casey Parsons that day. 
you covered up your evil act, you are morally bankrupt. In July, Channel 9 talked to Erica's aunt and adoptive sister. They said that when they visited Sandy Parsons in prison, he said he would tell investigators where Erica was if they gave him a deal. The Rowan County Sheriff's Office is expected to hold a press conference next week regarding the case. Um, I believe that they're probably going to talk about a cause of death. Um, I'm pretty sure that they would at least request that as being part of this deal. They'll probably talk about some aspect of what this plea bargain deal is. Um, I got to tell you from my perspective, I hope it's not much. I mean, this guy's already in jail uh, for an eight year sentence and you are now adding murder to that. I can't imagine that they're just going to let him completely off. I don't know if they'll give him half the time that they would have given him or something along those lines. Um, but it kind of makes me sick that once again, this family has found a way to use this poor little girl. And if you do look into this case more, if you watch the brain scratch searchlight that I did on this case, you will hear that some of the claims of the abuse that she went through um, was horrible. It was, it was truly horrific. Uh, being, kept up, being kept locked up in a closet, um, being fed dog food, um, being beaten when she would uh, wet herself in the closet because of not having access to a bathroom. Truly, truly uh, horrible accusations. And quite honestly, um, these people don't deserve to get out anytime soon because they did the justice of letting us know where she was. I, I really hope that that plea bargain isn't that great of a deal for them. Um, I just, I really can't believe, uh, I, I just can't believe that they're using her again. That they, they stole money in her name and now he's using her to try to evade um, the punishment that he is completely due and should answer for. It just blows my mind. But, at least in another respect, uh, we know that she is no longer being mistreated. We know she is no longer in pain. Um, it's just terrible that there was other family that was willing to take her in um, that could have probably shown her a better life. But uh, I believe that these two were so worried that she was going to say something that they weren't going to risk that. So this is the plan that they put into motion, which is truly, truly tragic. So um, I consider this pretty much a case cracked. I do think we might get some additional details, particularly about the cause of death, but I feel fairly comfortable saying that um, Sandy seems to be the culprit uh, in this case. He's the one that they pulled out to point out uh, where she was, so he's at least responsible for hiding her, uh, if not also killing her. If he didn't kill her, uh, maybe it was the mother but quite honestly, I think they both deserve the same sentence for, for what that poor girl was going through. And I have to say that uh, the son was really brave to step forward and to try to do the right thing here. He was actually participating in the abuse when he was very young, and he decided to stop it at some point when he was a teenager. Uh, but then to even step forward from that and possibly incriminate himself by telling the full story there, um, that's, that's pretty amazing to me, and I'm really happy that uh, he is that type of man, much more of a man than his father, apparently. That's it, Brain Scratchers. Thank you so much for joining me on this Case Cracked. Um, case Cracked and Heartbroken is what I'm going to call this one, um, but uh, at least Erica is now at peace, and maybe the rest of her family can start to work towards that as well. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you on the next show on the Lord Norts channel.